Welcome back to MacBook Studio. We're here at the Pixel Core Studio in Petaluma, and we have a familiar face. Sam Messman has returned to MacBreak. Thank you for having me, Steve. It's always, um, I kind of geek out when I get to come out here with you guys. So. It is. So um, we just both returned from the Final Cut 10 Summit where we were presenting all weekend, and it uh, was a lot of fun. It was awesome. It was actually really great to see all of the names with the faces that I've been talking to virtually. You get to go out and, and see everybody. It was just it was just a really good vibe, I thought, all weekend. So Now, one of the things that uh, uh, Sam was showing was this new piece of software that was just released called Frame.io. And because like, Sam's a workflow, Final Cut workflow guy, um, he was all over it. In fact, he wants to show us why this will revolutionize uh, daily productions and, and client reviews. This is a... It's pretty awesome software. Well, it's just, yeah, it's an awesome, awesome tool um, that when you combine it with a couple other tools, specifically for onset dailies, for instance, or client review, it becomes a really fast, really efficient, really clean, and nice looking, elegant way to show producers or clients what's been done. And it, and it can happen pretty much immediately on set if you combine it with, uh, tools like shot notes and sync and link and you work in a traditional professional workflow which is shooting with time code and adding some metadata. Excellent, so let's take a look how, how you would use this. So we're in an event here and I wanna shoot up into the cloud dailies for scene 119, right? Got it, you have a keyword collection for that or? Yeah, so I have a keyword collection because shot notes has already made scene based keyword collections and it renames my clips according 119-1 cam a so i'm basically set up and ready to do an export if i could do batch export somehow and get these into the cloud right with the clips names on them which i can now do with frame io so basically i'm going to make this project we'll call this scene 119 and i'm just going to select these four clips from this scene and i'm going to push e to append them to the timeline. So you actually have to put the clips in the timeline before you can export them. Yes, so what it's gonna do is you have a bunch of different options and I'll, sh I'll show you this in a second, but but the key is if you notice, they all come in correctly named um, according to- The metadata from metadata. the shot notes. Exactly. Got it. And I'm gonna trim these up for, for a faster upload here. So we're not gonna do this the way you might normally do this, but um, basically, I'm just gonna trim these up and down and just so that we've got, you know, some. Reducing the amount of. Re reducing the amount of the upload time and the overhead. And now I've got four clips and what I might do on a couple of them is I'm gonna add a marker here and a marker here, pretend these were circle takes and I will have the option in Frame.io of uploading just marker marked clips. just clips that I choose right but it I doesn't can have to export the entire time with just the no. marked clips so you have it's very flexible what you can what you no. can do and it's very simple in terms of doing this so when you install frame IO uh, from the App Store it just launched uh, this past Friday um, you can go to the share menu and you have two options that it installs directly in Final Cut in the in the destinations menu in the share pro, in the share menu which is frame IO H two six four which is going to allow you to shoot up uh, lower res uh, 1080 versions 1080 versions that are easily previewable in, in the cloud. Or you can upload, you know, ProRes, that is Frame.io source. It's so if you're working on a 422 out. timeline, it'll spit out a 422 timeline to and the cloud. That can go to the cloud. You're going to need a fast connection, obviously. You need a fast connection, you're going to need some storage, but like, you know. You it, can do it. You can full, do it. Full ProRes. It like can be done. Right, that's excellent. Um, but in this scenario, we're going to do IO H264. And when I step into the settings, uh, you don't need to worry too much about the naming conventions here because we're tags. gonna do clips. If you were gonna export the full project, you would go and, and name it. But um, here's a couple things. By default, uh, this might be set to video and audio, right? right. Um, and it might export, this is red footage. So you can go and change some of this immediately override um, the settings, make them smaller, to, smaller footprint. I'm going to want H.264. Mm -hmm. But the key that you really, if you get, and, and if I wanted to do this in the smallest resolution possible, the key thing that, you, that may not be readily apparent is you need to come down here and select web hosting. And web hosting is going to enable this video codec screen to turn to H.264, and we're going to do a faster encode. And it's also going to let you specify the resolution that you choose. And in this case, it's 854 by 480. And this is not enabled by default. So just make sure you select web hosting or you may not be able to control your resolution. Now, here's the cool thing is when it open, when it says open with do nothing, but actually because it's the frame IO preset, just by hitting next, it's gonna bring me 
wow, right in interface. to the Frame.io app, and it's connected directly with Final Cut, where I have a couple different options. So I can either export the whole timeline, which is going to shoot up the entire timeline I have for maybe client review. And by the as way, a, as, as a, a built movie or individual clips from the timeline, as a fully built a fully movie. Built, so right. say you had a, a uh, say you want to shoot up a scene, or say you want to shoot up a reel for review, you would you could do that, and you can even set um, ins and outs in the timeline to oh, do nice. this. Oh, nice! Nice. You can do range. So based you can do export. range based export, and that would be really useful in this scenario. Right. But what we're doing for dailies, though, we're going to export clips, and actually we're going to disable the timeline because you can do both. Oh wow! Um, and we're going to turn on clips. And I'm gonna, you can have discard disabled clips. So if you have disabled clips, it's gonna ignore those. And you can also export only clips with markers, which okay. is what we did earlier. So right. I could theoretically the just shoot up those circle takes you refer to. Exactly. And if you've already built in the, in the cloud interface um, a, uh, a project, which, I'm gonna, which we're gonna use as feature dailies, um, Basically, it's going to shoot these clips into that feature dailies project on the Frame.io on the website of Frame.io. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to upload. And so I'm going to hit upload. And now when we go into the Frame.io, it's going to take a little while to upload. And you're going to see something like this, which is four clips. Can you make the window a little bit bigger? I um, can. So we'll just the, the, by yeah. the way, a little tip, option click the plus sign. And you can go down there nice. on Safari. Nice. But um, Basically, what you would then do is I now have four clips, and this can get very cluttered. Yes. So one thing that you can immediately do is add a folder, and we're going to call this scene 119. And now I'm going to go and just quickly select these, and I'm going to drop them into here. Nice. And it's going to show me, and, and you can add folders within folders within folders. So I could do 119A, 119B, 119C, mm -hmm. and it's a really clean interface. And then when you know you double click, it's going to bring you in here, and you can go and immediately play back these clips. And actually, um, you know, depending on where you've gone, and this is 119.3, and it's really clean, and it's a really good way for people to quickly preview. And it's a really nice looking interface. It doesn't feel like you just shared a Dropbox folder. No, and definitely can, not. And you can control who you add to. So I'm just going to add a collaborator. And you know, if I did Steve at RippleTraining.com, you could then go and, and see some of this stuff. And Can I make notes on the clips? You can. You absolutely can make notes on clips. And there's some really detailed review features, which we probably shouldn't cover right now. Right. But this is, this a is just really, an overview. This is a deep, deep, like, there is a million different things that you can do. And you can go into share settings. And you know, it's very configurable. but as a nice way to go immediately from the Final Cut time, timeline with the naming schemes, et cetera, this is um, just a really clean way to, to share and review cuts with, uh, or, or dailies or whatever you need to do with clients. And it can start happening immediately from set. It's, it's fantastic. How much is it? Uh, well, it depends. They've got a few different storage options, but the default account is free. So oh, you nice. can get started pretty much. So you're anything. ultimately uh, tiering up based on how much storage you're using. That's uh, exactly it. So how much you need, and then the, high, the more space you need, the more right. it's going to cost. But you know, you can start off for, with a free account. Well, nice. Media. So you're pretty impressed with it, and you, you see yourself using it. Um, I have, it fills in a giant hole, which was being able to um, take your original clips, take advantage of the metadata in Final Cut 10, and upload without having to do all this renaming and craziness and do a batch and yeah. just so get it So these guys have the thought they, they thought it through. Absolutely. And um, it's, a, I think, a great solution for people who, want, who are working with clients who want to see material. And it takes that extra step out of the editor's way of going through and doing all this stuff that has nothing to do with editing. He can get this out of the way and get back to the edit pretty much immediately. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so um, you want to check out Sam's site, wemakemovies.org. Uh, it's a great, great filmmaking resource. Um, you want to check out his hardware solutions. He's got uh, the LumaForge. Uh, if you want super fast um, storage solution for like all these editors working off one box, it's, it's, it's amazing. Built for the small work group. That's, that's great. Small work, you want to check out his stuff. You want to check out Ripple Training, uh, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, see our tutorials. Sam, thanks for uh, joining us again, showing us uh, this really cool piece of groundbreaking breaking software for Final Cut Pro 10 users. Well, Steve, it's my old pleasure to be here always, so All thanks right. for having me. All right, and thanks for watching MacBreak.